Hello everyone. Today we're going to be solving a really interesting algebra problem with uh, the floor value. Okay, at this point you can just go out and pause and try the problem yourself first. So we do have the floor value of 2x plus the floor value of x is equal to 7 and we're supposed to solve for x. So let's go ahead and define the floor value function first. So if the floor value of x is equal to n, n being an integer in this case, so n is an integer, this means that x is between n and n plus 1. Okay, so the floor value is also defined as the greatest integer function. It's also defined as the greatest integer function. In other words, it's just defined as the greatest integer that is less than or equal to the number itself. So let's say we have something like 2.5. Its floor value is going to be 2. It's kind of like rounding it down. With the negative values, it's just a little different. Let's say we have negative 3.4. It's not the floor value of negative 3.4 is not negative 3, but it's negative 4. Because remember, it needs to be less than or equal to the number. Okay, and the answer always needs to be an integer. Okay, cool. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem. We're going to use substitution here. So, the floor value of x, I can just go ahead and set it as n, as I did here. So, this gives us the inequality, the first inequality. So, I'm going to start by assuming that the floor value of x is equal to n. Again, n being an integer in this case. Okay, n is an integer. And then I'm going to be writing the inequality for this. So if the floor value of x is n, then x needs to be between n and n plus 1. Of course, x can equal n because if x is an integer, then uh, the floor value is just going to be itself. So that's quite possible. But if it's one larger than the floor value, then it needs to be less than that. Okay, so that's going to be my first inequality. And the second inequality is going to come from the original equation. We said that the floor value of x is equal to n. So if you go ahead and write that down, this gives us the floor value of 2x plus n is equal to 7. And then I'm going to go ahead and isolate the floor value of 2x here. That's going to equal 7 minus n. And by the same definition, if the floor value of something is equal to 7 minus n, then that thing needs to be between 8 minus n and 7 minus n. Of course, we have equality here. Okay, so we got these two inequalities that we can use, and we have two variables, two unknowns, and two inequalities. So hopefully, we'll be able to solve this. But it's not like equations, of course, where you use elimination or substitution. We're just going to use a different method here. Okay, so what does this mean for these two inequalities? So x is the same x, and n needs to be an integer. Let's not forget that. So what I'm going to do is, in the second inequality, I'm going to divide everything by 2. So that's going to give me an interval for x, just like the first one. So we know that this is true, and, and at the same time, that the first inequality is true, which says x is between n and n plus 1. Now, how do you put these two together? Okay, there's a really cool way to do that, so I'm going to show you that method right now. Okay, so we know that x is greater than or equal to something here and x is less than something else here. So if you put those endpoints together, what, what is that supposed to mean? Well, it means that the value that x is greater or equal to is always less than the value that x is less than, right? Okay, I don't know if that made sense, but let me go ahead and write it down. So what I'm trying to say is since this is less than x, and this is greater than x, right? That means that the smaller value is obviously less than the larger value, right? Okay, so this is true. Now, this is a really nice way to transition between two inequalities that has the same variable in the middle because now this allows us to get rid of x for now and solve for n. And we also know that n is an integer. Let's not forget that. Okay, so this is one of the inequalities I can write. And it's also true that here, x is less than this value and greater than this value, meaning that this value here is going to be less than the other value. So I can safely say that, or in the other way around, doesn't really matter. So the larger value, which x is less than, 
must be greater than this smaller value here, which is n, right? Okay, so I have these two inequalities in one variable, and I can just go ahead and solve it as a system of inequalities. That's what I'm going to do. But that's not where it ends, so let's go ahead and watch till the end. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. That gives me 7 minus n is less than 2n plus 2. If I go ahead and work it out, put the negative n here, that's going to give me 3n is greater than 5, which means n is greater than 5 thirds. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed here. Multiply by 2. 8 minus n is greater than 2n. Add n to both, both sides. 8 is greater than 3n. This means that n is less than 8 thirds. I kind of switch sides. Okay, so we know that these both of these are true. n needs to be greater than 5 thirds and at the same time needs to be less than 8 thirds. Plus, we know that n is an integer. So when you put all these three things together, we have some unique value for n. So think about the thirds, 5 thirds, 6 thirds, 7 thirds, 8 thirds. Okay, the only integer that falls between 5 thirds and 8 thirds is 2. There's only one integer that fits in that interval. So n needs to be 2 given that n is an integer. But this doesn't end here. Because we only found the value of n, we still have to solve for x as an equation or inequality. Okay, we have to find all possible values of x, basically. But this helps a lot. Now, since we know that n is equal to 2 and there can be no other values of n, I'm just going to go ahead and substitute those values into these two inequalities. And let's see what, what I get from there. Okay, the first inequality is going to give me 5 over 2 x and 8 minus 2 is 6 so I divide by 2 that's going to give me 3 and the second inequality is going to give me that x is between 2 and 3. Now I got to find the intersection of these two inequalities so if you kind of think about it you can also draw a number line here place these values on the number line you're going to have a 2 here you're going to have 5 halves which is 2.5 and you're going to have the 3 here on the number line. So the first inequality tells us that our x values needs to be between 5 thirds and 3. And that's kind of like a semi-close interval, right? And the other inequality tells us that x needs to be between 2 and 3 included at 2 and not included at 3. So what I need to do is to find the intersection point for these or points for these two inequalities. And if you go ahead and overlap those inequalities, you're going to notice that x needs to be greater than or equal to 5 halves and less than 3, with the 3 not being included. And you can always check that. If you go back to the original equation, x equals 3 is not going to work because it's just not going to satisfy. If you plug in 3, 6 plus 3 does not equal 7. But if you plug anything less than 3, even 2.9, let's go ahead and try that. 2 times 2.9 is going to be 5.8. And then its floor value is going to be 5. And the floor value of 2.9 is going to be 2. And as you see here, the answer is going to be satisfied. If x is equal to 5 halves, which is 2.5, as you can see here, 2 times 2.5 is 5. And the floor value of 2.5 is 2, so 5 plus 3 equals 7. So that also satisfies. But anything less than 5 halves is not going to work. For example, 2.4. If you plug in 2.4, you're going to get 4 here because the floor value of 4.8 is 4, and now you're going to get a 2 there. Okay, so that's our solution. X must be between 5 halves and 3. That's it. Thank you for watching. Take care until the next video, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.